In this video, we're going to talk about Expo navigation using the new Expo 52 Expo router. Since Expo 52, Expo router is officially the default way to build Expo apps. We're gonna learn file-based routing. We're also going to learn about dynamic routes. We're gonna be using things like stack, tabs, link. And at the end of the video, we're going to be using native notify.com to send a push notification to ourselves. And I'm going to show how you can use the use router function to automatically redirect a user to a specific page. So instead of opening up the app to the home page, whenever the user taps on the notification, it will open up the app and automatically redirect to a new page using the use router function in Expo 52. First, let's talk about file-based routing and how it works. In one of my recent videos, I created a new Expo 52 app, and then I showed you how to set up a development build. Development builds are replacing Expo Go into the future for a lot of things. So if you've never created an Expo development build, I'll go ahead and link in the description below to that video. I highly encourage you to watch it. You'll notice the file scheme looks a bit different. The biggest update is instead of seeing an app.js file down here in the root of the project, with Expo Router, they now use an app folder, sort of like Next.js does if you're used to Next.js. You'll notice in your package.json file, the main value is now expo router slash entry. Before Expo 52, you had to update the configuration to get Expo router to work. Well, now Expo router automatically works. If you are upgrading to Expo router and would like me to make a video on how to do that, let me know in the comments below. But if you're creating a new project since Expo 52, Expo router is already set up for you. You'll notice in the root of the app directory, there's a layout page and a not found page. If a user ever tries to go to a page that doesn't exist, like maybe you're using Expo for a website and they go to a wrong link, it will take them to this not found page. The layout file is used to declare shared UI. By default, you'll notice they put a stack component in the layout file. Within this stack component is where you define your screens, or if it's a website, this is where you would define your web pages. One common pattern for apps is to use tab navigation. With tab navigation, there's icons at the bottom of the app screen that you can click on to switch between screens. If you would like to use Expo's built-in tab navigation function, you'll need to have the name tabs in parentheses as the name and declare in the options whether or not you want the header to be shown. By default, it's header shown true. So if you don't want the header to be shown, like maybe you want to create your own header, you'll need to say header shown false. If you do not want to use a tab layout, like maybe you don't want tabs in your app, you can instead directly declare your screens. So for example, if you say stack.screen, give it a name of index, and then maybe details. For this to work, you would then on the same level as the layout, you would need to create an index.tsx file and a details.tsx file. And then you could delete this tabs directory. And then your app would open up on this index.js file. And if you wanted to navigate to details, we'll go more into this in a bit. You could use something like the link component and it would look something like this link with href and then change this to your details name. From that point on, you can just navigate to whatever name you give these screens. And as long as the user is on the same level as the layout, it will look for the name of a file on that same level. So say you're in the index file and you href to the details page. It's gonna look for the details page here because it's on the same level as this layout. But for the rest of this video, we'll assume you want to use tabs for your navigation. The way tabs works is you'll notice tabs is in parentheses. Whenever you put parentheses around the name, what this tells Expo Router is you can ignore the name tabs when routing. So for example, whenever we're inside of a page, if you use a link, instead of having to say slash tabs slash about or explore, which is the name of one of our pages, 
you can just directly go explore without having to put tabs. It's kind of a way to organize your pages into a directory without having to reference the directory. The official name for this is groups. For tab navigation to work, you'll need another layout file within the tabs group. And if you're creating an Expo app for the first time, they've already done that for you. If you're upgrading, I would suggest creating a new Expo app just so you can see their examples you could then copy and paste them into your own app. Now that you're inside of the tabs group, the next thing we'll be talking about is the tabs component in the Expo router. To create a tab bar at the bottom of your app, you need to create a tabs component. And within the tabs component, you can put the different screens. The way you create a screen is by saying tabs.screen. You want to make sure to give the tab a name that correlates with the file name on the level of that layout. So for the home screen, you could say index and that will show the index screen. And by default, currently there's another page called explore. And so you can name it explore. The order of the tabs matter. So whatever you want your home screen to be should be at the top of the list. Whatever you want to be second in order should go second. For example, here, the home would be the first in the list. Settings would be the second in the list. If you put a third, the third would go to the right of settings. For each tab screen, there are some options. There's the title. This is the word that goes underneath the icon in the tab bar. And the second option is your tab bar icon. This is the icon that shows above the name in the tab bar. In the tab bar, you can create a function that returns a an icon and that will show in the tab bar. I also encourage you to check out the screen options for the parent tabs component. You can declare what you want the tab to look like if it's active, whether or not the header is shown. You can update the tab bar style based on the platform. So you could have one style for iOS, one for Android. You can update the tab bar background and the tab bar button. So with this all set up, your app will now open up to this index file within the tabs directory. Because there is no index file in the root of the app directory. Since there is no index file in the root of the app directory and in the app layout, the first is stack.screen with name tabs. When the app opens, it's going to be looking for this tabs group directory because again, the order of these matter. And then it's going to look within this directory in the layout for whatever is listed first here, which is the index file. And so this is what will open up first. And so that's a bit about how stack works and how tabs work in Expo Router. One of the next major components we'll learn about is called link. Link can be used to create buttons that link to different pages. On my home screen, I'm going to go ahead and create a link with href. I'm just going to say slash explore because that is the name of the second tab in my tab navigator. And it's the name of this file here. I'm going to say go to explore screen. And now this is the development build app that I built in that video I mentioned earlier. I'm going to test out the go to explore screen. And as you can see, it went to the explore screen. Now with the link component, the style prop works. So you could say styles.button and then down here, create a button style. And I'll say background color yellow and I'll give padding horizontal six and padding vertical three and I'll update the font size to be bigger. Maybe I'll actually update these a bit. Order radius six. And so as you can see, you don't have to create like a view around the link to create the button. You can just style the link directly to create a button. You can, however, if you would like to create something like touchable opacity and wrap it around the link. Now let's talk about dynamic routes. The way dynamic routes work is you should create a folder with the name of the route. So I'm going to create one called user. And then within that folder, you want to create the name of the parameter you want to pass in and you want to put it in brackets. So I'm going to say ID, put that in brackets and put a tsx.tsx after it. Within the ID file, I'll say export default 
function user. And before I create the return, I'm going to import something called use local search params. This is a function inside of the Expo router package. Since I named this ID, the way to get the ID would be to say const brackets ID equals use local search and you'll want to trigger the function and I'll go ahead and console log this so we can see it. And now I'm going to return this with a text ID. Now you'll notice in your navigation bar, there's an extra user slash ID option. The reason is because this is inside of the tabs group. And so it automatically creates a new tab whenever you create a new screen within the tabs folder. One way you can fix this is you can remove this directory to the root of your app folder, and then you can go to your root layout, create a new stack screen for the user folder. And when you make an update like this, you may have to completely close the app, shut down your server, NPX Expo start again, and then start the app again. And then you'll see the navigation went away. And now because we put this stack screen here in the root, you can say slash user in a link and you'll be taken to this screen. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna say go to user one. I'm gonna change this link to say user slash one and let's see if that works all right and as you can see it worked now say you wanted to go there while still keeping the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen the way you would do that is you can create a new group within the tabs folder so i'm going to create a group called home within this group i'm going to put the index file and i'm also going to put this user folder inside of the home group. And now in my layout, I'm gonna change index. Instead of saying index in my tabs layout, I'm gonna put a home group, refresh the page. And then within this home group, I'm gonna create a new folder, a new layout folder to create a stack navigation. The top will say index, the second user. In my root, I'll go ahead and delete the user one that I created earlier. And now I'm gonna go back to the home layout. So I'll make sure I have the index there and the user there. And I'll say header shown false for this as well. And after you do all that, you're gonna to have to completely shut down your app again and restart again. But then if you try to go to user one, as you can see, the navigation bar is still there and there is not an extra navigation. So just to review what we just did, if you would like the navigation bar to still be there with a dynamic route within the tabs folder, you need to create a new group. And so say you get to user one from the home screen, you could create a home group. In that group, there needs to be the TSX file. That's the home page of that group in the root of the group directory. There needs to be another layout. That layout needs to have stack screens inside of them with the first one being the index of that group. And then from there, however many dynamic routes there are, which are these folders here with ID in brackets or whatever in brackets. So for example, say I had more than just user, I could say just, I'll just say about or something like that. Each of those, you'll need to create a new stack. So I'll just say about here. And then after all that, you'll really wanna make sure you completely kill your app, restart your app, your server, just to make sure everything's working right. For me, when I made all these updates the first time, I was still seeing the icons in the footer. And so I thought things were broken. They weren't actually broken. I just needed to restart the app. All right, so we just reviewed stack, tabs, link. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the use router function. We're gonna send ourselves a push notification and then automatically redirect the user to a specific page using this router function. If you'd like to follow along with this part, you'll need to go to nativenotify.com to create a free account. There's no credit card required. Create an app, follow the instructions on this page. I'll go ahead and put a link to this video in the description below. All you have to do is npm install these packages, import, register, in and push token, and then paste this into your file, your app index file. 
And to show you an example, this is my index file. I imported register in and push token, pasted that there. That's all you have to do to have push notifications set up. For this next part, you can go to send, click advanced settings. We're gonna send some data with our push notification to redirect the user to a specific page. And to see how that works, you can click this button here, click get push data object, import get push data object as well. Down here in your screen, say const push data object equals get push data object. Then you can create a use effect and say if there is a push data object and push data object has a screen, router.push to that screen name. So for this, I'm gonna say screen and then I'll say user slash one to be taken to the user one screen. I'll say user title, user notification, message. And now when I send this push notification, it's gonna send this data with the push notification. So once the user taps on the notification, it's gonna get that push data object. And the way router push works is you just say router.push to the link. And so for me, it should say router.push slash user one, and it should take me to that screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this to myself, and then I'm gonna open up this on my phone so you can see if it works. Okay, and there's the push notification right there. And as you can see, it redirected me to the user ID page. And so that's how you could use router.push to redirect a user to a specific page after they click on a push notification. And that is an overview of Expo navigation using the new Expo router system. If you have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer any questions questions you have. Let us know any other thoughts you have in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.